chuck, chuck, chuck. Good day, and we are live. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Well, I feel it feels so like low for me. Okay, no, never mind. Oh, yeah, never sick. mind. I couldn't hear myself. What's good, y'all? It's your favorite Don. And it's your boy Vigiano. And you are now tuned into the Making Mogul Show. That means it's Monday between <laughs> seven and eight. <laughs> between seven and eight, at some point so when we start. <laughs> and we here. We kicking it off once again, going strong as usual. Of course. On the Making Mogul Show. How was your day? It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's kind of relaxing. Yeah. The rain told me to sit down, so I sat down. You know what? I I had already made a decision to stay in my house today, and then it rained. Mm, so I was sorry. very I was very proud of my um foresight. Yes. I feel you. See, I'd have been stuck trying to remember that word. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So last week, y'all know that we were by ourselves. So you know, we didn't have a guest on. But today, we brought somebody by so we can talk our ish, you know, and uh, and bring some more light to some local legends in the making, moguls in the making. So today, we have Logan Threat in the building. Hey, hey, How y'all hey, doing hey, today? Hey, hey, Good. Hey, hey, hey. I'm glad this air is blowing on me because it was very hot. It was oh, lucky. you know what, friend? I got the same bucket hat. I just realized that. <laughs> shout outs to crazy. shout outs to uh, Logan's partner in the building. He got shout the same, out, we got out, the same hat. Shout out, shout out, shout out. So um, we always start our show with the small wins. So quick recap, everybody knows that uh, you know, like the big wins, the big successes, those are the things that people talk about most of the time. But they don't ever talk about the small wins and the small things that they have to do in order to add up to the big ones. So every week um, during our show, we start off with just something small that happened in our week that, you know, we can consider a small win. You want to start? Well, coming on this show is a big win. Okay. I don't look at it as, as small, but I believe that it's a compound effect of all the things that we end up doing, yes. and it builds up. Like, you step with one step, and then you got two steps. Right. So I would say a small win this week is that I went and I accomplished some thorough cleaning and restructuring and renovation of somewhere that I hold dear to my heart. Nice. Nice, nice, that is, nice That's nice. a really big one, because a lot. I feel like a lot of times people don't, People don't take that extra time, especially if they are, like, overwhelmed or they're doing a lot. A lot of the times they don't, you know, take that extra take that couple. Energy, yep. that extra yeah, moment. extra energy, exactly, to just invest into making their space and making things that are important to them better. So that's a good one. What about you, VJ? Um, my small win for this week. Um, I got everything situated for the most part okay. for the next pool party. Yay! Because on the day that we had the last pool party, it was a little chilly. Yeah. But yeah, it's hot. It's been cooking for the last how long? Record hot numbers. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's about time we cool ourselves off. Right. And I agree. I feel like if it's chilly on August 13th, <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> After August, all of this? After, after the last? Nah. Then I'm not meant to do pool party. <laughs> But if it's not, it's going to be lit. You know, it's just not for me. It's just not for me, okay? I'll throw rooftop parties. I'll throw yes. beach parties. I'll throw other parties. But I'm about to spin a block, so it's beach. But Blunts and Baddies Reloaded on August 13th. That's dope. I it's going to be dope. It's going to be a wonderful day. Everything's going to work out cohesively because everything happens for the good. That's a fact. Thank you. Thank you. Speak thank you, that life into you. his event because he be using the word try and maybe too much okay, for you're me. Right. You're right. You're right. I'm, I like to take the chance, you know. Yeah. But take the chance and know you're going to own it. You're right. That's a fact, though. That's <laughs> a fact, though. That's a fact. I want to say for me... My small win for uh -huh. the week was I'm never prepared for this slogan. I'm going to just let you know <laughs> that every week I take my time because I think of my small win today when it's my turn. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> actually, 
I can use the show as my small win this week because VJ, I'm always throwing VJ under the bus. Always. VJ missed his stop. We was on the same train today, we was on the same y'all. Train. And he, I'm like, where are you at? I'm standing at the bottom of the steps, like, uh, where, where, what's going on? Looking, like, hold on. <laughs> Yo. Dom didn't get off the back of the train. <laughs> Dom didn't get off the front of the train. Yo. Where is Dom? And then I realized, it's not where is Dom. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was like, no. They're like, that's, that's not even, I can't, I don't know how that happened. But yeah. I got down here and I set up this computer mad quick, yo. That's a fact. I, I set up the computer. I set up the board. Yeah, everything was set up. I was, I Without VJ's help. Yeah. That's because that's that's his job. That's what he be doing. Yeah. But I, I I be paying attention, so yep. now I know. Yeah, that's that's a squad because <laughs> we're going to win regardless. Facts. Even when I miss the train, we're going to win. <laughs> Even when, when I miss the, the stop, train. we're going to win. That's it. Yo, I'm crying. Shout out to Tasha uh, in the clouds. Facts. Our our um, intern, she is spinning the wheel in the background. Go ahead, girl. All right, so let's get into it because you know we 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 got an hour to make it happen. So I always love to start off our interviews just trying to get to know people a little better. You're actually, you're not the first music artist we've had on the show, but we don't have a lot of music artists that come on. So I want to talk about how you got into your career, how you became who you are, and just some of the other things that you do that you feel creates Logan Threat. Well, first I got into the music business because I have a deep love for the arts and I wanted to be a singer and an actor and um, an engineer when I was a child. Okay. So I went to school for engineering at first, but I wanted to go for music and my parents were like, that's not going to make any money Hmm. because you know Caribbean parents and you know in Clubhouse they got a room surviving African and Caribbean parents. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah, (laughs) because it's... it's, I should tell my story. It's (laughs) sad, but some of the things we got were great but Mm -hmm. it's bad too because of the thought process of putting your children in your zone of what you think is a measure of success. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I got into music because I wanted to sing, my voice is really deep now, but Mm -hmm. um, I ended up becoming a visual artist like I drew. Oh wow. And I started drawing and then after I was playing sports and I wanted to rap. So I started becoming a rapper because, well a hip hop artist when I said I could rhyme, and I went into a battle, and I had a friend of mine write the rhyme, and I lied. And I I just went to the cypher, and then I just started freestyling. That's how come I became a beast at at freestyling. Because I forgot the whole rhyme, and I won the battle. (laughs) Nice. What? Yeah. So after I won the battle, That's crazy. I went to another spot in Canarsie, Brooklyn. Shout out the floors too. Mm-hmm. I'm from East Flatbush. I'm the king of East Flatbush. Hey, Flatbush okay. in the building. Church Avenue. That's you know what I'm saying? Utica Lovely Ave. You okay. rock. What happened is that somebody was there and the girl booed me and I was like, booed me because it was her boyfriend battling me and I was like, oh. Well, yeah. Then I realized the be- the biasness of battles. Yes. So I just kept on going. I let I went to England. I stayed there for some time. Wow. And I was listening to um, Tribe Called Crush's first album. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had the vinyl, and we was playing the vinyl, and I would freestyle and rhyme over their songs, and I wanted to DJ, so I used to get the tape and press it. I thought it was a mix by stopping it and recording it, double-sided recorders. Uh-huh. I was a kid, you know? That's crazy. And I just kept going. <laughs> then I ended up getting more involved. I was in a group. Mm-hmm. The group disbanded, and... I started my record company, TSU Records, when I was 16. Nobody wanted to help me. So when I got older and I was like 20, Mm -hmm. somebody I met, she was a paralegal. She incorporated the company and the rest is history. Yes, we were just talking about that last week. What, yeah. When we were talking about taking your time to incorporate your business. Because you got to get to it. What was that point that you was like, you know what, I need to legalize this? Well, I wanted to legalize it when I was 16 years old. But um, you know, however, our parents, they're like, "Mm, what you going to do, Caribbean parents? Oh, boy, you're crazy. All this type (laughs) of stuff, you know. And I just kept on going. And then I ended up getting a deal on the table for $160,000 with a record label. And I went to this lawyer, Mm -hmm. Colleen Dennis, and... The paralegal who incorporated my company 
put me in contact with her because she was a black attorney. So we stress in my family and universally Afrocentrism and being black because mm. it's the most beautiful thing to be. Yes. So I, agree. I just kept Question. on moving with it. Where is your family from? Well, my parents are from Grenada. Okay. okay. That's where the accents sound familiar. Okay. Right. And um, on my mom's side, they're from Sierra Leone. Okay. okay. We have family from Portugal, Venezuela, um, some in Trinidad, England, Canada. Oh, wow. So he's just like and it, and around the map. Yeah, and Italy. So primarily, that's where we're from. So I know that the first slave trade, that's where they dropped us. Wow. That's, wow. I didn't expect, like, the list. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that's dope, though. Yeah. How, what do you... Where do you feel like, because you speak really well, and I always highlight when people speak well. I don't know why. Like, it's a it's a very important thing for me because I mm -hmm. feel like there needs to be a balance, even if you don't necessarily, like, have good diction or grammar or anything like that. Like, there's just a difference in a lot of ways in how people speak. So where where do you get that from? Well, the reason I speak well is because I went to school for the gifted and talented at Philip Escala. Hey, school. shout out, shout out, shout you out. You know, she was a prodigy, a musician at three years old that could pay, play the piano. Wow. Affluently. So where I got this from is that my parent, my father, he's really strict. He never used to allow us to watch TV, he used to come and feel the television. We only used to be able to watch The Cosby Show, A Different World, The McNeil Report on Channel 13, and Miami Vice. Oh, wow. So basically, we used to have to sneak. My mom would let us sneak to see certain things. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't do well in our studies because we have a lot of siblings, it's about seven of us in the whole family, but five within my parents. Mm -hmm. If one person didn't do something, then no one could go outside. So that taught us to work as a team. Yeah. So... I had to read a lot, and I learned that how black people invented everything. Right. So when I heard uh, had a hundred black inventors book, it's white with brown on it. Yeah, I know that. I had book. that when I was nine. I knew that wow. book. So when I went to school, what the teachers were teaching us, I challenged them, and mm -hmm. they're like, "Dag, this guy." When I went to school trip, we went to the Apollo. So I went to Sylvia's restaurant. So I learned that there was black owned businesses. Yes. So my father always had situations in business where he ended up becoming an independent contractor and I didn't know that at that time but watching that made me become a business owner mm -hmm. because I said oh he worked for himself and I'm depositing thousand dollar bills right before it went out of circulation so wow I started speaking I started watching different things reading different things and then you know they grew up in England my father grew up in England as a citizen of England so they spoke differently. Dishonor was spelled differently. So everything was etiquette. Mm -hmm. The knives, the forks, everything was basically we had to have the proper etiquette. And I learned when I went to school, I got chased and I got into situations because, oh, you think you're smart. And mm -hmm. I realized that you have to be able to speak in every vernacular in order to survive yeah. because... Culture. Some people be like, yo, my nigga, what's up? You got to be able to speak that way. You should be able to speak in every format because when I'm speaking English to somebody as a foreign language, even if they're speaking English, mm -hmm. if they're not comprehensive on what I say. So that was very important for me that people understood me. So that's why I learned a variation of languages because I speak more than one language also. Really? What else do you speak? Spanish and Haitian Creole. Oh, wow. I don't know what it is. I I I'm I've been trying. Mm -hmm. I use this app called Duolingo. I yeah. do too. Really? Yeah, but the Spanish was me independently. I had a book. Yeah. From back in the days, and I was like, you know, it's called E2, uh -huh. and I just started writing every word because you got to think about it. When we learned English, what did we do? We yeah, learned the alphabet, mm -hmm. then we learned every word. But see, when you write Spanish. Some of the things in the in the end of the sentence is really the beginning of the sentence. Right. Yeah. I've so noticed. some things like you'd be like hablando, and it means talking. He's talking to you if you're using it in the um, masculinity or femininity. So if I say no problemo, that means I'm talking to a guy. If right. I say no problema, I'm talking it's to a woman. woman. Yeah. So that's what I learned. Hmm. See, 
I, I'm trying. Mm-hmm. Trying to pick it up, but... Mm-hmm. You're not trying. You're working on it. Yes, trying, I am. We're not trying. Right. Trying is failure. But um, right now, I would like to tell you about this thing called Allison.com, which people don't want us to know about. It has a thousand free courses. We could take courses on... You could take courses from Yale, Harvard, all these different places, mm. and it's free. And you get the same certifications as if you paid. Right. And went to school and got the credits. So they offer it after. So I, I just study actively one hour per week. I dedicate to education because people mm. always say, I don't want to lecture. If you don't want to lecture, you're stupid or you're dead. Because <laughs> right. you have Teach to me. learn every day. Right. And you change every day. We get old every day, even if we don't want to. Our bone structure changes every few years. Right. So things change about us, and we need to be open-minded to what's going on in our surroundings and how the socioeconomic system has changed, the infrastructure of the world, and how the relationships have changed between men and women and different civilizations and ethnicities and cultures. Right. So it's very important. So by learning, you get to learn, interact with people, and the more people I could speak to, the more people become clients or become friends or become customers to the business. Because a thousand people spending a hundred dollars with you per month is one point two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Simple. True. Ain't complicated. Mm-hmm. It really isn't. It really isn't. And I love that you I love that you gave us a resource, number one. Mm-hmm. And I love that you break it down that way. Cause what I realize a lot of um A lot of moguls and successful people that I either follow or kind of like tap into their journey at some point or another say that the way to scale to success is by breaking it down into tangible numbers. That's a fact. So you have to break it down. You have to break down numbers into uh, smaller numbers to not just, I guess, believe that you can get to it, but just to make it a little bit more uh, mentally attainable. But it also becomes a multiplication table at that time because the large number is just a bunch of small operations that's happening Mm -hmm. at one time. And that's really success, as you said. Like, it's it's just a a repeat of an X amount of customers at Y dollars. Like, you know, you don't have to make it complicated in terms of how you want to do it. Just how many bites you could get off and how many people you could target. And that's that's really the math. Yep. Facts. I'm from Brooklyn. That's a fact. <laughs> Yo, for real. That, sometimes that's what, it, that's, that's what it breaks down to. So you've done a lot of, you've been on a lot of platforms, a lot of notable platforms. And some of them that, that stand out to me are like household names. So here we... So we highlight those things, and and if you would like to talk more in depth about those platforms, you definitely can. But what we like to talk about is things that inspire other people on believing that they can get to those places as well. So what would you say you did to position yourself to be able to get on platforms like BT and when um, 106 and Park was around and things like that? Like, how, how do you, what do you feel like you did in order to get to those places? Information. What mm-hmm. I did was, they always say if you want to be um, something, you have to be in the vicinity of it. That's mm-hmm. a fact. There's a movie called Six Degrees of Separation. Yes. We're all six people from knowing a millionaire or knowing somebody famous. We're all six people away. Right. Or they might right be next door to you. For instance, my I have family members who have a song that's out called Texting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With Alkaline. You know oh. what I'm saying? Texting, texting, you know that song? Yeah, okay, yeah. I know so that song. So that's family members of mine. Then I have a family member who's in the Olympics. Mm, wow. <laughs> you know, and it's just... You're right there. It depends on how you were with the family. Right. Y'all may be related or y'all may be family, and your aunt is closest to him, but your mom knows him and knows the mother, but they didn't grow in the same place. Right. So what I said, like, with the platforms is that whenever somebody told me something, there's only two things I knew could be true. It could be right or it can be wrong. Correct. Universal equation applies, and this is my thing called ARA, A-R-A. All rules apply in every situation. We always want to make things convenient for us. Mm-hmm. If somebody murders somebody, whether it's justified, 
or not justified, you're still a killer. We like putting icing on the cake and yeah. adding things to stuff Gray so area. it sounds great. Like mm -hmm. when people believe in the death penalty. If you don't believe in people killing people, why are you sitting down and y'all happy when the person gets killed that did something to your family member? No. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be happy about that. I understand your vengeance, but vengeance is for the Lord. Right. That's my, my viewpoint. So everybody's entitled to their own perspective. So the way I got to different places is that I just paid attention to what other people do. There's no idea new under the sun. Mm -hmm. So if somebody did this, it's not even only about believing in yourself. If you want to be a doctor, you have to go to school for 27 years. People said, what do you mean? 27? You got to think about it. Elementary school. Five. Oh, right. Because remember, you cannot get there without doing that. Right. Absolutely. And if you didn't go to school, you could have took your GED. But no matter what, in order to take your GED, you still have to be a certain age. You still have a, a certain propensity level and have certain criteria. Right. Okay. So let's say we're going off of the formality. Five to 18. That's 13 years. Then you got to do schooling four years. Then you got to do another school. Then you do your residency. And then if you fail your residency, then you got to do it again. You got to do it again. So yeah. that's another three years. You're making $36,000 as a doctor for the first three years of you being a, a, a physician. Mm -hmm. So if it takes that long for that, why in other aspects of business, nobody wants to allot that because of their thought process? Oh, well, a lawyer. Well, he's a lawyer. He's a doctor. He's a scientist. But what about an entertainer? Mm-hmm. This is inception. I was a musician before I was born. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe that everyone that I meet and everyone that I interact with was already set in stone. It's either you're going to go to the left path or the right path. It's right. A it's a quarter. There's no in-betweens. There's, there's no in-betweens in anything in life. It's you got to choose a side. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely agree with that. You know what's crazy? So, like, we've already met. I know we've known each other but some time. I don't remember how. How? Do you? Okay. I had somebody who was doing some management with me. Mm -hmm. They met you online, did some parties. You were modeling at the time. Oh, so this was a long time. A long time ago. So you <laughs> modeling. I met you. We, you know, you were modeling. Then you ended up doing something else. You were doing publicity. You started doing different things. You right, kept on. That's why that. I said, I know you wore a lot of hats. Yeah. So we all do. Right. And Disc makers have something, doing music full time. Mm -hmm. When I was not able to get features, what I did was I started a television show. So I had it on public access. It was free. So oh, I had to have right. something. So I did the public access. Yeah. And then after, oh, okay, I, oh, well, you can't do Now nah, I got public access. Guess what it gave me? Accessibility to all the entertainers who need my publicity. Yep. So when I speak to them, they want to be cool because they want it. And if they're on the rise, they're on the come up, and I maintain that relationship, then I know them forever. But you know the music business yep. is based off what can you do for me yes. right now. Right now. Right now. So if you're not cool, they're going to do it, fake with you and everything. But remember, we have to remember this. They are not our friends. Mm -hmm. We did not grow with them. And even people you grow with, friendship is not based off of time. It's based off of Learn treatment. That. It's based off of treatment. I'm here. I hit you up. You're like, okay, send your stuff. Oh, okay. It's a vibe. Let's go. Right. Now the rapport is built because we've known each other for some time now. You understand what I'm saying? It happens. Right. So getting on these all different platforms is refusing not to quit. Because yes. it's not even about belief. If you have to do this to get this, that's simple math. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just you don't do got it. a job, get one. Mm -hmm. You don't got money, you could do two things. Either you're going to make money or you're going to steal. Right. So there's, people make things too complicated. There's men and women. Mm -hmm. it's, everything's in twos. Mm -hmm. So why do we make things so complicated? It's not valuable. A crackhead, well, not a crackhead. Let me say it this way. An addict. Yes. who was an ordained minister and a college graduate. He had got his master's. I met him. And when I was younger, I needed to pay my rent. And he did drugs. Mm -hmm. And I, I refused to sell narcotics to people who are black. Mm -hmm. However, not wanting or having the support of family members, you end up doing whatever you got to do. Right. So he's like, oh, listen, it's simple, it ain't complicated. And I never thought about it. He said, can I get a dollar? I ain't got it. I'm out. It's it. It's simple as complicated. You doing it or you're not. Okay. Yes, no, right, wrong, good, bad. What is it? So he taught me, and he called me the mayors. They call me the mayor in, in these flappers mm -hmm. because of all the things I do in activism and in the community. Right. So he'd be like, um, 
Think about it. Either you could do it or you can't do it. This is what has to be done in order to get this. If you don't want to do it, then you're not going to get it. Right. That's why people think success is measured by what? Money? No, success is measured by what you set out to accomplish and doing that. Even if I never become, which that's not going to happen, if I don't become a multi-billionaire, which I don't believe that's not going to happen mm -hmm. because I have a product line called 10K Incorporated. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I make many products. I got apparel out. I got sneakers out. I got smoothies here. You know what I'm saying? Smoothies? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, so basically what it is is that if you want something, your wants and needs have to be aligned with each other. Mm -hmm. I want food, but I need food. Right. I want millions and millions of dollars, but I need millions and millions of dollars. Seventy percent of the United States economy doesn't have a thousand dollars in their bank account. So yes. if you got ten G's, you're richer than two thirds of the United States population, which is three hundred sixteen million estimated. Dang. Come on. Don't have five hundred dollars for for emergency. Right now, something happened, you can't even fix your car. Right. But you, you got a fifty thousand dollar car but you can't afford to pay for one thing. I know dudes who were sleeping in their whip. Because I was like, oh, you got money. The richer you get, the less you believe in material. That's true. Right. Because your mind opens up to a different thing. I made clothing because I'm like, Dad, why am I paying hundreds of dollars to wear clothes when I can make them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a great point. And I'm going to sell them for affordable because our people have problems with economics. Like, for instance, with affordable housing. It shouldn't even be called that. Because it, you have to have, affordable? yeah, you have to have at least 70, 60, 000, 60 something thousand to get one of the affordable housing. Right. So that means it's discriminatory. Yeah. Because if you make fifteen dollars a year, I mean an hour, excuse me. I was about to say. Yeah. That's twenty four hundred dollars per month. Right. Estimated that's thirty one thousand dollars twelve months per annum. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna take twenty five percent from the taxes. That means you're walking away with like twenty. One thousand right. dollars. Now you live somewhere. It costs sixteen hundred. That's sixteen bands in ten months. That's nineteen thousand two hundred dollars. How much do you have left? We didn't say food yet. Exactly. You didn't pay electric. You didn't pay gas. You didn't pay anything. It don't so have kids. it should be based off of your salary that you should be getting a, be able to get an apartment. However, that's what's making people homeless. Mm. Let's get with it. See, people don't got it on the right schedule or the schematic of this program. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to get an apartment and you chilled and you have family and they have something established, give yourself six months and you save the bread. Now you get a place. You have three to four months of rent to pay. So you're waiting four months to make one month. Mm -hmm. So now you get one month. Right. So if you pay 1600 that means you have to make $400 for four months in order to pay your fifth month. And you're going to make more than that. So you'll always be ahead of the game. Right. Five accounts. Emergency account, vacation account, savings account, checking account. And it's not because you want to make money from the bank. It's just because it's necessary as a tool for you to get certain things you want. That's it. Because you're not going to make money from the bank. Right. Trust funds. No. Nope. Different things. Wealth. Wealth in this country, in America, is based off of land ownership. This guy, Bill Gates, owns 268000 Acres of farmland oh, man, yeah. in the United States, which means what we eat is going to be controlled by right. what they decide. Mm -hmm. So now we're just sitting around here chilling, and that's why I love DMX. He had bought a farm in Arizona right. at his height. And I'm like, why would he buy a farm? But when I started making smoothies and all these different things, mm -hmm. I thought about everybody in the Caribbean. The reason they're healthier, they're walking up hills all day. Yeah. They're going around all day, and guess what? They can see the blue water and get the fish. They know it's really fish, not right. swai that they're giving you saying that it's whitings yeah. or giving you different things and saying that it's something else. And yeah, then, the fruits are there. You just pick it. Mm -hmm. and you can see it. I put some fruit, fruits in the freezer for, like, a week, and it didn't freeze, and I'm like, what's going on? It didn't freeze. Nah, because liquor doesn't freeze, and right. I know why. So what's in the fruits that's not making it freeze? What's in that that's doing that? Yeah, that's... Think about strange. it. Strange. It's very, very strange and peculiar. Mm -hmm. And I stopped eating meat. I've never thrown up again. Ever. I've never thrown up. I can drink a gallon of Hennessy. I'm not saying all at once because I'm not drinking a gallon of Hennessy. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> a gallon of Hennessy or overproof rum, those are the best drinks if you want to get fucked up. Yeah, right? facts. So, I've never thrown up ever again. Even wow. stool looks different because it's shaky now. Mm -hmm. It's cleaning you. One piece of beef 
stays in your system for 12 months. If you ate 100 pieces of beef, it'll 12 be... 12 months? Yes. I thought it was like... No. 12 months. A couple weeks. Never. Oh, oh 12 God. months. So if you do wow. that, you have beef or you have red meat in your body till the day you die. It doesn't go away. If you ate... And I'm sure I ate hundreds of it. Right. So... I'm trying still to get back. Working it off. <laughs> I'm still trying to get back. You know what oh I'm my gosh! Mm-hmm. I, don't, I used to look at all this stuff, guys. all this stuff on the wall. I used to be like, "Yo, man, that's a dope thing." They got the two, two piece with a biscuit from Popeyes on the oh three nights. Right. I thought it was all good. Of course. I thought all that was all good. I was looking at Big Macs like, "Yo, I'm getting it." Now it doesn't even affect me. Yeah. When you change same. the way you look at things, the way you look at things change. That's it. Absolutely. It's simple. It ain't complicated. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that you, you say all of that about food. Food is just so different now. And I don't, I can't, I can't really say that it's just due to growing up because, mm. you know, as you get older, your perspective on things change just in general. In general. But food tastes different. It like does. everything. And it, it's not even, I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's just like an elevation of your palate or anything like that. It's literally the the recipes that they're using, the chemicals that they're using, like everything is just changing. Mm-hmm. So everything tastes di- When I tell you the last couple of months, I can't eat anything. I'm telling you. I'm and tired everything of Everything makes me sick. Well, I would advise this. We know broccoli and carrots are made vegetables. Right. There's no wild broccoli. There's no wild carrots. Right. I never knew that growing up. Maybe I would have never did it. Mm-hmm. Okay. The fruits, the, the vegetables you eat is usually based off of what it does for you, the shape. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why walnuts look like brains. Exactly. Oh. Definitively. Now, when you get to chill for a minute, like, I feel differently. My mind doesn't react differently. Food makes you upset or not upset. Mm -hmm. The body's self-healing. So once I started learning these different things, I'm like, wait a minute. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? Because remember, based off of our culture and our ethnicity, we have different taste buds than Caucasians, Mm -hmm. different taste buds than Latinos, Mm -hmm. Hispanic, because Hispanic is a made-up word. (laughs) Which means you speak Spanish. Right. Because really, there's only two types of people in the world. Black and white. Just think about it. That's it. Everything's in twos. You need each other, the yin and the yang. Without one, the other one can't survive. Right. And that's just it. At one point, we're the most superior and dominant most of the time. And at another point, they are. It's just like it has to work. And it's not a racial thing because there's only one race. Right, the human race. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say racial or racist... We're talking about a run. We're talking about people running to get what we got to get and who's going to beat who. That's what racism is. Mm. Who gets the most? Who gets there the fastest? That's what it means. But human beings are very, very peculiar species because humanity is a virus deadly to all mankind. Mm-hmm. We, we, what we eat kills us. What we, we're the only species that destroys the ecosystem. Every other animal, because we're animals too. Yes. We're the only ones that destroy what's around us. We're barbaric. Carnivores prey have their eyes in front of their faces. I mean, predators have their eyes in front of their faces and prey have theirs on the side. Mm -hmm. That's it. Those are the people who are just calm. We're not calm. We're not. It's just horrible. (laughs) Wow. Came, came locked came and loaded. Came prepared. Locked and loaded with the information today. I got one bullet in the chamber, nothing in the clip. I don't have to reload. Consider this a hit when in the studio or in the streets. Mm. So okay. it goes. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Let, let's talk, let's talk a, li- a little bit more about um, your music. So what is... I'm very interested because I'm not even going to... Not e- even going to lie. Mm-hmm. I have not heard your music. Right. You probably didn't didn't know you were hearing it. You know it. what? That's a good point. As I was saying that, I thought about that. Yeah. Like it, it's very possible to be honest. But I've written for a lot of people. It just won't drop down. I mean, caught it. I wrote for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I just won't drop down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I caught it. Bars. I I, I used to. I, used I know you used to, to be spinning. You know you knew me a long time. Yeah, so. you used to be spinning them bars. <laughs> um, what is your content about? 
my content is about the improvement of humanity. I love that. I had that feeling. The improvement of humanity because I know the truth. Mm -hmm. And Erica Badu just had this real. She says, 85% of the world are followers, 10% of the world knows what's going on, and the other 5% have a different swing on it and will be killed because they think mm -hmm. so differently than everyone else yeah. that they're going to look at them in a certain way and cast them down. People are crazy till they're geniuses. Kanye. Mm -hmm. People think that he's the most psycho person in the world. But you got to really listen to what he's saying. Yes. And you really got to pay attention from the beginning to now. His message has not changed. It hasn't. We change because whenever somebody doesn't... Anger comes from not being able to control people. Agreed. You get angry, be like, Yo, why are you talking about me? Why are you doing this? But if you have self-control, then you won't get angry because you choose to be angry. Right. Who controls your feelings? Not you. Who controls right. everything inside of you? When you go to a doctor, what the doctor asks you, what's wrong? So they can know where to look. Yeah. Because they don't have the information. You got to give them an example or a place to start. Right. So my music is based off of true life events that I've experienced in East Flappers, Brooklyn. The murders, witnessing it, hustling. Well, and let's get it clear. Hustling means to move speedily across something or to move fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about the drug dealers who are drug distributors, um, seeing what the system has done to us and what it's still doing to us, and they expect us to be healed. The only way you could be healed from abuse if you stop getting abused. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's consistent in the United States. The history of the United States is 240-something years, right? And they tell the story about us the way they want to tell it, their narration. Mm -hmm. So my music is a basis of just look at the truth. Just look in front of your face. You can't see God. People say they believe in the high power. I do. Mm -hmm. You can't see air, but is it there? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me what I got in my pocket, but does it make it not true? Correct. And this is the thing. People don't know how to think. They were like, yo, 50% of black people in jail when there's 45 estimated million black people in America. So if there's 1.1 million people in jail and you say it's 50% of black people in that situation, that's less than 1% of the black population in the United States. Right. Because 10% of that is 4.5 million. 2.25 million is 5%. So that means it has to be 0.2.5%. 2, 5% of black people in jail. When in 1980, there was 100,000 people in jail, but because of the prison industrial system, they made it that way, so we keep on revolving. Because right. once you're in the system, you can't get out. Right. You get a misdemeanor in New York, you can get expunged. However, they still could always see it. Now, say if you committed yeah. a crime. Say if I committed a crime, mm -hmm. and I never committed a crime before, and mm -hmm. they don't have no picture. Just because I was apprehended in another situation, they have something to go on. But right. if I never got arrested, that person would never be able would to find never, me. Exactly. Look at that. That's what they do. And when it's Caucasians or different facets, if they have the same ethnicity or culture, they'll give them a pass because they don't want them in the system. Because most people they put in the system end up becoming criminals. If you're forced to children, you most likely would be a criminal because you're forced to survive. Right. And you're not learning. Your brain is not fully formed until you're 25. So how can you try these children as adults, if they're under that. Mm -hmm. We know right from wrong, mm -hmm. but that's what my music's about. I got a song out right now called Enough Respect about people fighting for respect, and we were taught to be violent mm -hmm. by people who were dropouts and foster children, and we thought they were cool because we were blind because we didn't have guidance. Then I got mm -hmm. another song called True Story, which is about true life events about a girl, a few girls that I knew growing up, and we know those girls mm -hmm. who they're a little fast. They don't really got people there. Right. Got involved in the wrong life. Shorty started prostituting out of state. She got murdered, left in a, in, in, in a um, garbage can. I changed the last line to the second verse and just said she was subdued and, you know what I'm saying, and left it like that because I didn't want it to be so gruesome. Right. But there was women who were found there, raped. Over 30,000 black women have been grabbed in the United States just off the rip because they're not street smart. Right. People with the vans, yo, could you help me with gas? Grab them, they're gone. Nobody's talking about that. Because guess what black women produce? Black men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black children. Mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood was to diminish our popularity and our popu populace in the United States. Yeah. We're not a minority. Nigeria has, has 600 million people, twice the size of the United States. The people in Nigeria are what complexion? 
We have to think about it. Right. If we really look at it, we got to see who's the minority. If we look at the world population, because we want to separate things. Everyone's from Africa. Mm. Think about it. We all was one place one time. Mm -hmm. And then after, some people came after where we could say they're not from Africa because they were in the hills or they were in the mountains because they're still looking into different things scientifically where there's filaments in certain ethnicities' teeth, which mean they were cannibals. Right. We weren't. We're the only 100% human beings genetically by DNA states that. Ancestry. We don't need to watch Ancestry. They can never tell. They don't got our DNA, so that's a rip-off. <laughs> but if you're in Africa, which was Akubalan, and we go back there, there's African people that I know who are born in Africa because I'm an African in America, right? You take me somewhere, an African elephant born anywhere else is still an African. Right. So why aren't we? Mm. It's simple is not complicated. It's simple is not complicated. And this is the thing that people don't understand. That's my message. Now, Malcolm X died because he didn't have enough money. He had less than two bands. He couldn't even stay at a five-star hotel. And he was that strong. He was the most strongest. They said no man should have that much power. That's why Kanye made that song. Yeah. That's how you could see the influence. Because what happened? Denzel Washington should have won for that picture. But mm -hmm. they didn't give it to him. Of course not, because I remember um, Oliver Stone wanted to make that. You know who gave Spike Lee the money? Oprah Winfrey and Prince mm. and Bill Cosby. They was like, Spike Lee's like, no, y'all not making it about us. Right. That's not happening. Yeah. That, we need that to... type of stuff makes me cringe. I don't. And this is the thing. So I have a song, True Story, that's out. I got a song, Put It Down, that's going to be released soon. Mm -hmm. I have an album called 40 Days of Rain, which rain replenishes and it destroys. Mm -hmm. Water right, it can does. drown you or make you survive. Mm -hmm. Wealth comes from us eating and drinking. Because you can't live without water, you can't live without food. So how are you wealthy? If you have money, you're rich if you have money, but you're wealthy if you have life. Yes. Oh, my God. See, people's perspectives is tainted. Yeah. People want to pop it, yo, love and hip hop. I know people got to do what they got to do for money, but in those shows and these videos that are depicting us, just like Buckwheat, I was watching The Parenthood, and there was like, oh, your son is doing Buckwheat. And then he took it off and said, I was one of the actors that played Buckwheat and sold it, that I put it down, Hattie McDaniels. They went through all of the black actors who had to play those stereotypes in order for right. us to do what we wanted to do. Right. Bill Cosby, that was filmed in Brooklyn Heights. That's how I knew what Brooklyn Heights was. He was actually a doctor because he had a GED and he was with Cindy Poitier making movies. Mm. And then he ended up becoming on I Spy, the movies, then he did a sitcom. He ended the Cosby so he could end on a high note. A different world. You know how many things I learned? Hillman was not a real college. It was fictitious, but there's a really right. Hillman. There's people that think it's a different world than where you come from. They had Marissa Tomei in that. They had to take her out of it because they said that they wanted to be fully Afrocentric. So they removed her and they removed somebody else and they made it that it was fully Afrocentric. They took Denise out of it because she had posed for Playboy. See, people don't know because Bill Cosby didn't want that thing to look. Right. And then she returned back to the Cosbys, finished it off, and ended it off because she was Lisa Bonet. Damn. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Black parent, white parent. Right? Cool. Cleopatra. They got Liz Taylor playing that. Why? Because when Rome went and had the problem and they conquered um, Egypt and they formed, they didn't actually conquer it. They compromised. They had some, they called them half cast at that time. Mm -hmm. But what the new Egypt looked like, which it used to be Kemet, is people who look like they're from Yemen. And there's people like us too, but the mm -hmm. reality of it is they're dark as us. Mm -hmm. The menelin in our skin makes us smarter than every human being. Facts. Our brains are bigger than everyone forever. Right. It can't change. And this is what they want to hide the fact. That's what my music's about, the truth. Well, I'm definitely going to need you to send me uh the two tracks that you mentioned that are already out and the one that's coming out yeah, so i can make sure it. that they put They're it on youtube rotation. i got 120 something videos on youtube oh wow from me even doing um album listening parties from raekwon i did a lot of things with a lot of artists right i worked with a lot of people a lot of people there's people i've written for that nobody don't even know <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying I respect it. Listen, I want I want it so that we can put it in rotation at the station. You'll have it um, in seconds. Okay, perfect. Let's do that. And then I feel like I need to schedule a weekly call so that because. 
don't you just like to hear him speak? Yeah. Like my best friend says has the same message, the same thing, a lot of the same content that you're saying right now is the same stuff that she talks about, and I just know that people just just from watching her i know that you get so many people that just look at you like you're crazy like okay but what is the definition of crazy though and what's the definition of weird to be crazy means you could be psychotic or you could be different right everybody wants to pay so much to be somebody else right listen a wo- women have always asked me why don't you cut your hair why what happened to samson Mm-hmm. He cut his hair. Delilah cut his hair. He went crazy. Mm-hmm. If hair grows all over our body, why do you think that? It's protection. Right. Our body's seventy percent water. So what's up? What are we talking about here? People are confused, dazed, and they're in a twilight zone. And I love that show by Rod Serling. You are now into the twilight zone. Mm-hmm. There was a movie. I mean, episode eight, because I watch old stuff. Because I'm one of those people that like watching the past so I can know the future. Mm-hmm. Right. The guy always used to be at the bank and stuff like this, and he used to always want to read it. He's like, I don't have any time. His wife used to get mad at him, Mm -hmm. right? The whole world ended. He was in a bomb shelter. He came out. He had his glasses. He's like, I should kill myself. God will forgive me about this, right? Then he thought about it. He looked. He said, all the books. I have all the time in the world. And he said, I have all the food because whatever did not get contaminated, it was black and white. He had it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, His last name was Bemis. That's what it was. And I wrote about it. They said if you used to doodle in class, it's not that you should be put in special ed. It meant you was advanced. Right. So we're visual learners, aesthetic, different things. And we were having our children be put in special ed because they decided that we were not intelligent. Right. No. Everyone's intelligent. And nothing to base that off of. No premise. We're all intelligent. Look at Frank Lucas. He didn't know how to read and write, but he knew if he weighed a certain amount of money, it was this weight, it was that amount. He didn't even need to count it. Right. Come on. I spend $20, that's 100%. I make $200, that's a 1,000% markup. Just think about it. That's a 1,000% markup. Do the math. Everything in life is math and science. Yes. It's simple. You like me, I like you, cool. I said, where do you get a reward before you do the work? Mm -hmm. Just look at our relationships. When I was growing up, I used to be able to walk with a woman and we kids and we go get a slice of pizza and a 7-Up and it's cool. I just liked you. Not, yo, yo, where you stay? Who you live with? What's this? (laughs) Oh, I know broke niggas. Remember, broke is a mentality. It's just a form of irresponsibility. So if you the one say you don't want to mention no broke niggas, when that word means king in Ethiopian, where it comes from, and Niger doesn't mean Niger, it's nigger. Mm. Because it's derived from the Latin word, nigga, and it's in the Bible. Mm. It's in where they talk about nigga, where they created the first Christian church, mm. Simeon. So we created that. Just like you could ask everybody who's Jewish, well, people, not even Jewish, Christian, why are you Christian if Jesus was a Jew? J- just the simple, just, just let's think about this. Let's just think about this stuff. We say it's getting late and it's 2 a.m. No, it's early. It's another day. Right, Let's think about these day. things that people say. Yeah. Oh, I'm taking it one day at a time. That's the only way you could take it. It only come in one day. <laughs> right. Like, come on. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. So perspective and wording. I love that. And that's why I speak well. And that's why my music is intellectual and it's understandable. And if you don't like my music, it's fine. Right. But I learned something. I didn't like Biggie when he first came out. But I like Machine Gun Funk. What I had to realize that Biggie was a genius. Because he has a song where he said I wanted to get P-A-D when he was saying paid. But that <laughs> spells pad. And nobody caught it. Right. Nobody caught it. But he had distinction in his voice. Mm-hmm. And the things that he used to say and the way that he put his schemes together. There's somebody I knew that never learned no notes. And he was illiterate, basically. But he knew how to play every note. Similar to R. Kelly. People want to knock this, and everybody yeah. want to talk about this. That was just done to that man because he didn't have, he didn't pay out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that he didn't do wrong things because I wasn't there. Right. But I'm nobody's judge. What anybody who didn't footage? make a mistake, put your hand up. No hands? No I hands. Made a lot of we all made mistakes, I so made nobody a could put. Lot of mistakes. But guess what? That's what learning is. Right. Trial and error. Mm-hmm. So my music 
40 Days of Rain's out. Today's Survival's Uncertain is my next album is completed. It's going to be out. Wow. It's, a, it's completed. It's going to be a compilation. My next album is going to be out sometime around September or like the fourth quarter, which is called Paradigm, mm -hmm. which is going to be distributed in a way that no music has ever been distributed in more than one platform at the same time. In order to get it, you would have to have the programming to get it, mm -hmm. to get all of it, because it's like a puzzle. And you can mix it whichever way and figure it out, what I'm saying. So... And then I have another album that will be out next year, and um, that word, I ain't going to let that out yet, but it's such a dope concept. I believe it. It's such a dope concept because the time is now. Mm -hmm. The future is now. And this is the age of the number seven. Mm -hmm. And people may not know what that means, so they should Google it. <laughs> well, there you go, y'all. <laughs> make, sure, make sure some homework. Make sure y'all Google it. I want to thank y'all. Of course. Listen, thank you, because I, I I love our guests because everyone brings something different to the show. And I, I love when I meet a person that really makes me think. Thank you. And that I was thinking the whole time. I mean, I was listening, mm -hmm. but you made me think the whole interview. Unshameless so plug. Yes. 10K Incorporated, yes. 10K Smoothies, 10K Apparel, 10K Footwear. I'm a... I create sneakers, apparel, I have smoothies, and also TSU Records, which is my distribution and video company, which I started, the company that has me making money from the other companies because of my exposure. Mm -hmm. So music is making me all this money. Without that, I couldn't make no money in the other businesses. Right. And then my other company, Joint Ventures, the JBM Corporation, which is after my family surnames, because we need to build legacies yeah. for us, right? And I do credit restoration, financial management, economics of black people laddering if people don't know what that is and i teach people and educate them on things that are very simple that we should be taught in school yes why are we not being taught about money when everyone has to use it right i definitely absolutely agree um i i will talk to you after this so we can schedule some things no problem I, I have a whole I have a whole other platform, and I have a lot of people that I work with, so I want to start bringing things together and offering more workshops and stuff for the youth, so, so yes, VJ, mm -hmm. well, actually, before, before VJ, so Logan, just let them know where they can find you and find your music. At Logan Threat, L-O-G-A-N-T-H-R-E-A-T, on every platform. Okay. On YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube page yes. so I can get to my subscribers, so I can get the monetization money. Yes. You know, and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Logan Threat. I have a writing name as a clairvoyant, and I have a book coming out called Terms and Conditions. So oh. that should be out by December. So gotcha. writing is free. You just get a book and a paper. And I'm just saying, you can get that for free. They'll give it out. Right. So you could write a book, and then you could go to a library, and you could type your whole book up. That's and a make fact. a manuscript, and then sell it by papers. And get free copies at a place that you work if you, don't, if you have a job. If you don't have a job, then you can do something. So it's too many ways to make money to be a criminal. Right. So if America's based off of criminality. You want to be a paper gangster? Holler at me. Because that's where it is. That's how you hurt people. I want to be a paper gangster. And that's it, because you got to think about it. If I had 200 people together one day, mm -hmm. and my boy passed away, I said, yo, we need to put $1,000 together. Somebody said, why? If we were to put the money together for one month, if everybody could afford it, in 12 months, we had $2.4 We could have bought 20 properties, had a syndicate, which is a group of people who invest in properties, which why Nipsey Hussle was killed because he was making it that regular people could invest with him and his valuation was going to be $2 billion. Go read it. Check it out. He got killed. That was an assassination, and I'm going to say it here. That's why Kanye said in that interview, Amen. I'm going to get killed in this interview. Now, we should mm -hmm. always speak the truth because God decides who wins or loses. So nobody can't do nothing to you if it's not meant to be. Everything's for the greater good. That's a, That's a fact. That's a word. DJ. All right. Um, real quick. Uh, Allison.com, you shouted it out, and I got to remind the people, it's a free yes. place where you can get a whole bunch of courses and certifications from accredited schools. 
Um, if you know me, you know I'm the only Vigiano, so please find <laughs> V-E underscore J-A-N-O anywhere. Um, pop out. Pool party, August 13th. Okay. Let me know. <laughs> that's a fact, that's a fact. Yes, and it's your girl Dom. You can find me on Instagram at Dom Smith. That's, that's Dom, Dom with a Y, not I. I. <laughs> and and Scoop, there it is. I tried to say that one time. Oh, my gosh. So I had to make it your ice cream. Listen, Scoop is very busy in the month of August, so, so definitely make sure good. y'all reach out before it ain't hot no more. And then what you gonna need ice cream for? Yeah, okay. I feel like ice cream. People don't like ice cream, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> But all right, yo. That's a fact. We out of here. It's been nice. Yes. It's been wonderful. Make sure y'all tune in next week. I have a <laughs> I have a special guest <laughs> for next week that y'all are gonna be like, wait, what? So tune in. Yeah, but tune make in. sure y'all tune in every Monday, seven, seven to eight, 8 p.m. Shout outs to Extreme 104 FM. Peace.